What is up, gangsters? Today we are making a traditional English shepherd's pie. I will be making a cottage pie or a North American shepherd's pie in a future video. First, we are going to peel some potatoes. I think I have seven. I'm using russets. They're my all-around favorite potato. The peels are going into this bowl of water because I make a tasty snack with them. Make sure to get rid of any imperfections, dark spots, bruises, eyes, but don't worry if there's a bit of skin. The proper way to boil potatoes is to start in a pot of cold water with plenty of salt and bring both the potatoes and water up to a boil. I don't use this method and I don't recommend my method. It requires good timing and the possibility of undercooked and overcooked potatoes. I use a drop of oil to keep the potatoes from foaming. Turn the wrong burner on high, panic, then turn the correct burner on high. You want to cut the potatoes around the same size. Smaller pieces cook faster, but it takes more time to cut them up. Hashtag not sponsored. The peeler I use is called Kuhn Rikon. They are cheap and very sharp. I'm on my second one and I will definitely buy a third. It's easy to use, easy to clean, and makes quick work of a tedious task. Lit up and boil the potatoes for 10 to 15 minutes. I had to look up the time. I just use a fork and when it passes through, it's done. Drain potatoes in the sink using a colander the bowl with handles and full of holes. Someone has likely got drunk and used it as a hat at some point. Grab your masher or an empty bottle. Add about a quarter cup of milk and a tablespoon of butter. There's a little ruler on the side of the butter package. I just use the width of my pinky finger. If you use margarine, we can't be friends. Add about a tablespoon of tarragon. It's optional, not everyone likes it, but it's traditional. Dillweed or parsley could be used as a substitute, but it's perfectly fine if you don't add any herbage. I like to mash around the outside edge of the pot first. P.S. Don't do this in a non-stick pot. It won't be non-stick for long. Adjust for salt, and if the potatoes seem dry, add a bit more milk. But don't add any more butter. Too much butter will make soft spots on the potato crust. Not the end of the world, but that crust is nice. There's a faster, more mechanical method of mashing potatoes. I learned it from my mom. It would require me to buy electric beaters and find somewhere in my tiny kitchen to hide it. I don't mind mashing by hand. I feel I've developed a pretty solid technique. We're going to rough dice a carrot, wash, peel, and cut in thirds. Preheat your pan to medium and add about one tablespoon of fat of your choice. I'm using olive oil. Use a non-stick pan. I prefer ceramic because they can put up with the amount of abuse I can throw at it. Quarter each third, then slice into one centimeter to half inch pieces. Or just use frozen diced carrot and add in later. Oh 
I'm wondering if I should do a couple videos on knife technique, terminology, and safety. Now we are going to peel and dice an onion. First cut off both ends and cut into the first layer and peel it off. Use the root end and cut it down the middle. The root will hold the segments together. Put the flat end down and cut up to but not into the root in one centimeter segments, then against them. Trim the root end up to the root and then discard the rest into your stock bin. Make sure to soften the carrots for five to 10 minutes before adding the onion. Then cook the onions until they start going translucent. Push the veg to the outside edge of the pan and then add in your lamb and let it brown. Wait two to three minutes and do the flip and break up shuffle. If the pan starts looking dry, add more fat, but keep track of how much. Let's talk about sourcing your lamb. Here in North America, we don't eat much lamb, so it can be expensive. The trick is to find a halal butcher, as they will be cheaper because they sell much more of it. My halal butcher will sell ground lamb for around $4 a pound fresh, but my local Safeway sells it for $14 a pound and it's frozen. I don't agree with halal practices, but I found a cool one. He just lies about his product being halal. He even keeps pigs in his walk-in. We shared a breakfast once. Curried scrambled eggs and bacon, and a coffee cup full of crown. Once the meat is nicely browned, start stirring in the veg from the edge. Add a tablespoon of thyme and a teaspoon of sage. Then add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and a tablespoon of fresh ground pepper. And of course, all of these are optional ingredients. But let's be honest, you're better off with them than without them. Remember I said keep track of how much fat used? Now here's why. Add an equal amount of flour as you did fat, in my case two tablespoons. Stir in and cook the flour for a minute or two. The flour will be ready when it is cooked to film onto the base of your pan. We call that fawn. Clear a space in the pan and deglaze with a glass of wine. You can do the same with stock, beer, or you could even use water if you're a monster. What we're trying to achieve is essentially cleaning the fawn off the bottom of the pan, which adds to the flavor of the dish. Add a liter of stock, in my case lamb, reduce by half and check for seasoning. While this is reducing, the flour and fat that is suspended in the mixture will be thickening to form a nice gravy. Stirring the mixture will help keep it from sticking and burning to the pan and speed up the rate it reduces. This should be when you add the frozen peas, but I forgot. You should always taste while cooking. Make sure it's right, so you don't find out the people you care about are really good at lying to you.
Grab a baking pan. This one is 10 by 11 inches, but it's the ratio of the meat to potato that's really most important. Lay in your meat and make sure you evenly temp it out. You don't want the top layer sinking in. I feel the ratio of one to one is the best. I want equal meat and gravy to perfect potato. I use the potato masher to dispense because it's already dirty. Be careful not to roll the potato over the meat. You want distinct layers. Use a fork to gently rock the potato into place. Make sure to leave plenty of impressions in the top of the potato as it helps with a crispy top. The potato needs to be a barrier against the gravy bubbling over. Leave no holes and secure the edges. I use knobs of butter on the top, but brushing melted butter is a much better idea. Evenly distribute the butter. If there's any pools anywhere, it'll lead to a soggy mess and destroy the crust. Thanks for watching. Let me know what video you want me to cover next. I have a lot of recipes that are already shot and ready to go. I just have to edit them. So let me know. I might already have it ready. Thanks for watching. If you want pretty portions, don't do what I just did. Make only cuts that are wide enough that your spatula can pick them up.